and welcome to This is Nigeria, unlocking her potentials. And today we're unlocking the tourism potentials and the culture of Kogi State people. Kogi State has wonderful and diverse cultural heritage of different tribes. It's a place, it's a mini Nigeria actually, different dialects, and they all live together peacefully. So in this edition, we're looking at the culture of the people, the tourism potential with over 29 tourism sites, including the Mount Patsy, the one of the highest mountains in Kogi State. It's actually a table mountain, and you could play football when you get to the peak of it. And we brought you visuals from there. And we also visited the palace of the Ohinoi of Iberia land. Wonderful palace, one of the most flamboyant of any traditional ruler in the whole of Africa. My name is Mayawa Ulwe B. Oh, unless I forget, we we'll bring you the also the oldest two-story building in Nigeria. Yes, it's authentic. It is 250 years old, and it was found in the palace of the Atta of Igala. It's called the Odogo House. All this in this package. And we also stumbled on the Ogidi Day, a celebration in Okunlan of all the tribes, of all the different villages and counties in Okunlan celebrating their culture with visitors from outside and it's also a privilege for us as we met with the director general of the nigerian tourism development corporation Folon shokoka he was also there and major general buba marwa retired also graced ogidi day it's a wonderful package for you today so don't you go anywhere my name is mayawa ulwabi stay with us in the second half of the 19th century the confluence of the rivers Niger and Benue offered itself as an important center for slave trade during the Nupe Wars. The confluence had also aroused great interest from European explorers and missionaries earlier in the century. British traders saw a haven beyond their dreams and immediately established a post there. Because of its strategic commercial importance, the British quickly established the military headquarters for the Royal Niger Company to protect the traders and ensure safety for their activities. Rich in agricultural produce and slaves, the town soon became a booming trade center and the administrative capital of the colony over time. That is the setting for the capital of present-day Kogi State, which is one full of tourist attractions. Lokoja was the seat of power under Frederick Lugard, the then Governor General of the Protectorate, who left his imprint on the town, with his former office and residence still serving as the government house today. Lokoja also hosts the National Museum of Colonial History, a rich record of Nigeria's political history. If you're visiting Kogi State, you do not want to miss Mount Pati, a hill rising about 450 meters above sea level. If you say Mount Pati, you are saying Mount Mount. And so yeah, but now that we've been able to give you proper narrative, the Mount is English and Pati is our indigenous language. Mount Pati is the place that uh, uh, Lord Lugard always come to. Whenever he needs to rest, whenever he needs to brainstorm, whenever any ship is coming down from south, he has his observatory post here. From that place, if not for the bush, you will see the two rivers, River Niger and River Benue. So the big one here is the Niger, the other one at the other side is the Benue. This building, I think, was done around 1910. So between that 1910 and 1914, this beautiful woman was disturbing him. Let's give this country a name now. This is where they were doing all that. They were able to come down and do all. Inside here, you will see his chair, 100% wood, no nail in it. There's a way they put everything together and also some artifacts. The floor, uh, I think tiling technology started from Nigeria. The way they place these stones on the floor and everything is perfect. So. This place, the only restoration we did can be up to 10% of the original structure. Okay. And here, to immortalize Lord Lugard, you have his boss there, uh, the statue, and the ladies standing next to him is Lady Flora Shaw. 
that later became Flora Lugard. Um, apart from the structure, the ecotourism around here is amazing also. Like this baobab tree now, we have many baobab trees around here. This baobab tree, if we carry out proper research, it could be as old as this building or older than this building. So it's even a kind of library. If you go to the tree now, you will see some names inscribed on it. You will see some stuff that on the body. So it's one of our historical uh, assets around here. So we have the observatory somewhere down here. We will still see it later. That is where Dr. Lugard will come out of this place, go to the observatory and uh, monitor the marine life, what is going on on the river. This road it was not made by Lord Lugard. It was by past government of Kogi State. And it has been receiving some palliative repairs from Kogi State government. It's about 14 miles by 14 miles. You can actually have a water park, golf resorts, hotels, apartments, and all that. So the blueprint has captured all this. So the Bureau for Public Procurement and other MDAs, they've been working seriously. We've had a couple of investors. We are going PPP. Government cannot do this alone. What government can do is to put the enabling environment in place, make sure that these places are okay and you can have access to this place. So with the PPP arrangement, we'll have fantastic investors now that have come up and they are taking the slice of what they want to do. So in no distant future, you, are, you don't need to go to South Africa or Venice or Milan or all this, or you will come to Lokoja. And for the cable, yes, just about eight months from here to the confluence point. So you will see people coming up here, hiking up, coming with their car, and they can take cable car from here, mm -hmm. see the whole of Lokoja, mm -hmm. see Benue River, see Niger River, and go to the confluence. From there, you do whatever you want to do and come back. Mm -hmm. So investors are listening to me. I'm giving you expo already. <laughs> we have investors here also. Yeah, Please come back, investors. tell your friends. Yes, our governor, Governor Yaya Bello, the youngest governor in Nigeria, he has been drawing international figures, national figures. So it's a state that you can, we have the template, we have the infrastructure, we have the platform for all of us to be prosperous together. Governor Yaya Bello is ready and has been doing that. Dr. Folashade Ayuade, Secretary to the Kogi State Government, speaks on the tourism potentials of the state. Kogi State will be the focus of the world because we so build our tourism that people will be coming from all over. The confluence point is in Lokoja, yes. where two major rivers meet, River Niger and River Benue. It's a good site. The, in fact, the color of the two rivers differs, and you will see the point where they meet. We have the Monpati. On top of Monpati, was where Nigeria was named. The girlfriend of Lord Lugard looked through the river Niger and said, look, this is Niger area. And the name Nigeria came to be. We have a lot. We have a lot. I think in the, last time the cenotaph, the Freedom Center, the oldest primary school in the whole of northern Nigeria is in Lokoja. And it was lost of that. The Holy Trinity School was the first primary school in northern Nigeria. Built in 1865 by Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowther, the school is still in use and also houses the Iron of Liberty, a monument marking the spot where slaves seized by the British from slave traders were kept before they were set free. Kogi State is home to many firsts. It also harbors the first hospital in northern Nigeria. Commissioner for Tourism Salifu Idachaba shares more on the valuable attractions found in Kogi State. You will agree with me that uh, the first primary school in northern Nigeria is in Kogi State. Wow. The first church in northern Nigeria is in Kogi State. The first bank in northern Nigeria, the Loluga Bank, is in Kogi State and Kogi State equally houses the Island of Liberty where the last segment of slaves were set free. The first 
story building in Nigeria is not in Baragre. We have it at the palace of the Ata uh, Igara. The palace is, is, uh, is at Ida, and it's called Odugo House. It was built about 250 years ago with earth mud and raw palm oil. So it is there for everybody to see. Then other very good tourists that we have in Kogi State are the European uh, cemeteries. We have two. The Europeans, you know, that uh, came to Nigeria and were in Kogi State, died and were uh, buried. They are there and it's a very good uh, tourist site. We are doing the much we can to make sure that they are covered. At the moment, too, we are trying the much we could to ensure that uh, we engage on PPP business, that is public-private uh, partnership arrangement. Because you all agree with me that even in the state of Israel, Singapore and Dubai, you know, they use this to drive development. We have the potential to realize about 20 billion Naira from tourism in this sector. If you are able to really, you know, hit the ground running and having all hands on deck to get them properly developed. At the moment, my Amibu governor, Alahaji Yaya Adozabello, is setting up a think tank by way of uh, advisory intervention on culture and tourism. And this committee that he has setting up is peopled with professionals that are very, very vast in the area of uh, culture and tourism. On the 15th of June, 2021, the National Museum and Monument, in the celebration of uh, the 2021 International Museum and uh, Monument Day, His Excellency Alahazi Yaya Aduzabello was worthy of being given one because of his numerous contribution to the development of culture. Today, I tell you, if you go to uh, Okene, you will not know the difference between an Okene man and a Gala man. You will not know the difference between an Oku man and a Gala man. If you go to West Versa, if you go to this other uh, land. So he has, he has been able to use these values to bring a very strong bond among the various ethnic groups we have in Kogi State. Hello, this is Nigeria. And we've been unlocking the tourism potentials in Kogi State. However, the story is not complete. If you have been to Kogi State and you have not been to the palace of the Ohinoi of Ibera land, Laji Ado Ibrahim, C-O-N, a graduate of Harvard, a mining engineer, the man of many parts. And did I tell you, he's 92 years old. He has this palace sitting on 10 plots of land. And it is magnificent, it is majestic, is reflecting his love of nature. You can hear that too in the background. It's his love of nature. There are ostrich, there are peacocks all over the place and artworks made of lion, especially the white lion. The king, Ohinoi of Ibera land, also hosts some visitors here, but it's called Mommy's Palo with a lot of golden touch, beautiful soft lights. And so, me too, I'm sitting as a guest today where nobles and kings have sat. But this is also a library. Apparently the king is a reader. In every sitting room, he has a little library of books so that when he wants to relax and read, he takes a book and he reads. Well, it's like the Ohidoi has a thing for scorpion. I've noticed this design of two scorpions. This is the third one. So I want to perch on it. Maybe it will also bring me some good luck. This is the number one throne room in Ibera land. And you can see from the length and breadth of it, the majestic and the opulence. Honestly speaking, this view, this palace has blown my mind. But we'll go on a short break, so don't go anywhere. Stay with us, there's a lot more to come. This is Nigeria, unlocking our potential. Here, as part of the tourism tour of Kogi State. The Cenotaph, the Freedom Center, the oldest primary school in the whole of Northern Nigeria is in Lokoja. The first tourist building is in Kogi State, and it's called Obogo House. It was built about 250 years ago 
with earth mud and raw palm oil. People who are very proud of culture and that they've developed it into all sorts of art. We in Kogi State, culture is our life, culture is everything. We don't joke with our culture. Without our culture, traditions and customs, then we lose who we are as a sense of people. We're from Kogi State. We're proud to be from Kogi. We have very rich culture. And to be able to bring it out, there must be government support. Well, welcome back. If you're just joining us, the conversation is on tourism, culture and entertainment in Kogi State. Yes, you heard right. Congratulations to Mamanike Okundai, one of Kogi State's cultural exports. She was actually honored with a traditional title at Ogidide. The people of Kogi State also have a diverse cultural heritage, which they showcase in rich, colorful festivals, some of which are Egbe Festival, an annual rite of reburial of past owners of Egume in the Dekina local government area. A Kweti festival is held annually in Ebira land to mark the end of the lunar year. It is characterized by dance and philosophical songs. Italo festival is an annual get together for all Igala sons and daughters all over the world. It holds in Aiba. Ovia Osese festival is the celebration of chastity of women and the initiation of adolescent girls into womanhood. This is Nigeria witnessed the Ogidi Day in Okunland, which showcases the culture of the people as well as promotes peace and unity in the land. A genius was born to you here on the 23rd of May 1951. We thank God for our journey mercy and for his journey mercy on Mama. I have with me here traditional rulers all over Yoruba land. Uh, you can see the eminent first class royalty and the princesses from Yoruba land.
you know, culture is everything. Culture is beautiful. Culture is our life. A nation that lost her value has lost everything. But we in Kogi State and the good people of Ijumu, particularly Okun in general, and that is why we are here today in uh, Ogidi. We call it Ogidiela in Ogidi, um, in Ijumu local government area. Yo. Ogidiela. When I say Ogidiela, they say, I don't know more. Okay. <laughs> you know, it actually means when you give out your child, maybe in marriage, you don't hold forth. You give everything to that man, you know, and let them grow. And uh, it signifies our culture. And that is why we are here to celebrate these good and beautiful people with rich culture today. My name is Luis Tokuba Shubiljo. I'm a legal practitioner and I'm also a cultural person. Ogidi is a cultural center. And if you can see from the crowd you see here today, you know that people come from all walks of life to come and attend this program. And that is why I'm here. I'm not from this particular town. I'm an Ifema in an Indumu local government. We are all in Junomo, but I'm from that place. Uh, but I haven't been an asset to the governor of culture and tourism. I take culture very seriously. The encouragement we have from Aladi Abelo is one of the things that is propelling somebody like me. Cultural heritage in Africa is a huge one. And there has been integration right from creation with the people of Africa. We don't joke with our culture. Every day in Africa is a cultural day. As you can see from here on display, we have so many cultural associations that speak to the assistant as a people, as Africans. You will see the kind of dressing and you see the joy on them. It's not for nothing that Nigeria is branded as the happiest nation on earth. So culturally, the norm and all that, we have them. And when it comes to norm, norm has to do with our behavior, how we conduct ourselves in the society in relation to our culture. Like Yoruba people, we prostrate with the ballet. Our ladies, they need down to breathe, the kunle. So we, you can see that we live that on daily basis. Well, art is life and part of art is culture. Without our culture, traditions and customs, then we lose who we are as a sense of people. For example, you can see I'm wearing adire. Adira is something that's unique to Nigeria, our Adira Eleko. So we wear these things with pride so that people know where we're from. We're from Nigeria, we're from Kogi State, we're proud to be from Kogi. The Director General of the Nigeria Tourism Development Corporation, NTDC, following Shok Koka, was there to witness the Ukidi Day. He also spoke on the need for private sector participation to drive the tourism industry. People who are very proud of their culture and that they've developed it into all sorts of art to celebrate themselves uh, uh, and uh, they refuse to allow time to erode the passion for with which they celebrate Ogidi Day. I'm delighted I came and I intend to help them better structure and put this event uh, uh, together for the next year. It is time for private sector participation in the creation of businesses that generate employment and generate taxes. That's where we're going now. Governor Yahaya Bello speaks on the rich culture of Kogi State and the talents of the youth in the state. We have very rich culture and to be able to bring it out, each and every one of these our culture, music and musicians, is to see their talent. The other strategies which are used to promote our rich culture across Kogi State is to organize a competition among all the various ethnic groups in Kogi State, whereby every ethnic group will select their best. And also, this is a way to take our youth and women off the streets, because they have very raw talent, but they cannot exhibit it. Kogi State is fast becoming the entertainment hub of Nigeria, with Nollywood and a lot of music artists gracing the place for different occasions at different times. But then it shows how very peaceful and safe the state is. Kogi is also home to stars in the Nigerian entertainment industry. Nollywood actors and musicians such as Joseph Benjamin, Mercy Johnson of Kogi, Dari Art Aladi, and the latest sensation, Juma B, are also from the state and a host of others. Well, it's a wrap on This is Nigeria, and we've been talking tourism, culture, 
and entertainment in Kogi State. You can see Kogi State is a beehive of activities from Ogidi Day, Ohinois Palace, to the entertainment sector, a lot of international artists and local artists. So you can see that Kogi State is a beehive of activities and a lot of us are enjoying it. And did you see us truly dancing with the people in the cultural dance? Oh, I could groove if you allow me. That's how it's been on This Is Nigeria Today. My name is Mayo Aolua B. So watch out for the solid mineral sector that is coming up in our next edition. Very powerful revelations coming from Kogi State. Kogi State should be one of the richest states in Nigeria with what she has buried underground. The abundant human and material resources that God has blessed that state with. The limestone is out of this world. I'm told the quantum of limestone that we have in Kogi State can last us for the next 300 years and it could feed and sustain the whole of Africa. So watch out for the next edition. It's an interesting package. Thank you for watching. God bless Nigeria and God bless Kogi State.